Aquaba. Welcome to Dan S channel. I trust you are all doing well. I'm back and this morning I'm at the Jamaican consulate in Ghana and I have an esteemed guest that I'll be introducing to my audience. Without further ado, just be excited, lay back, watch, and listen keenly. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Morning, honorary. It's my distinct privilege to give you a warm welcome to my channel. Uh, as you know, sir, this is part-time, but very intentional. And I think the time is now to let my audience hear from the honorary Isaac Emil Osei Bonsu, Counselet of the Jamaican Embassy here in Ghana. My focus primarily, honorary, as you know, is to the Jamaican diaspora. And uh, this extends to anyone else in the global space, but specifically the Jamaican diaspora. Because having, living in Ghana now for 14 months, I do believe our Jamaicans who have the Africa bug. It is my belief that destination Ghana is a viable option for them. And there are many reasons, but one primary reason for me is the nostalgia that they'll experience. And simply, it looks just like Jamaica, aesthetically. And I liken that to twins. And while they are identical, even though one may be of a bigger size than the other, there is no doubt that they are family and they are related. So uh, the Jamaican consulate being here, I would like to ask you, uh, you know, one or two questions as to <laughs> the role and function. So. Let me get straight into it, sir. They are. Yes, You're okay? Sorry. Yes, I'm. Yes. <laughs> sorry for the interruption. What? Office. Honorary, this is what happens when it is uh, I'm unfiltered, unedited, and unscripted. So yes. I'll, <laughs> I'll go with it, I'll flow with it. Sure. Uh, Honorary, can you tell me uh, the year that the consulate was opened and the genesis well, behind it, please? Thank you very much. Thank you, and. A warm welcome to you. Welcome to the Jamaican consulate in Accra, Ghana. Um, you have mentioned my name pretty well. <laughs> Isaac, Thank you. Isaac Amelo Sebos is my name. And um, yes, the, this um, office was opened in, um, in August of 2021. So we are in our second year, and um, it was open prim primarily to fill that void of having Jamaican official representation in Ghana. You know, before that, all official Jamaica matters that related to Ghana was being handled by the Jamaican High Commission in Nigeria, Abuja. Mm. and all other matters that also pertained to Jamaican citizens in terms of passport renewal, citizenships, notarizations, paperwork, birth certificates, everything that, 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 that was needed by the citizens. The citizens had to go to Abuja for that. And you may 
agree with me that that was inconvenient for them. So there was the need to have some representation in Ghana to more or less deal with some of these matters. And of course, because Jamaica could not establish a full-fledged high commission in Ghana when they had one in Abuja already. In fact, to be honest, I think Jamaica only has two embassies in the whole of Africa. Ah! One in South Africa, yes, and then one in Nigeria. That is so. I didn't know that. So then it makes the work of the honorary consuls for Jamaica very, very important because they fill the void of the official representation. So yes, I mean that is what we do. And of course, we are the liaison between the Jamaican government and the Ghanaian government in terms of trade, diplomacy, and every other thing which is bilateral between the two countries. So that is what we do. Interesting, honorary. When it, as it relates to the Jamaicans that are living here, what services uh, are they able to benefit from here? In other words, is the consulate a uh, first point of contact in the event they have any concerns or if you have individuals outside who would like to look at business opportunities, investments in Ghana, and uh, they are just, you know, small, a small company or a small entity, can this consulate here be a first point of contact, a resource center, for want of a better word, to bring forth their inquiries? Absolutely. Mm. That, 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 is, that is one of the primary functions of the consulate, to, you know, we are to promote anything bilateral between Jamaica, Jamaica's in the diaspora, and Ghana. And of course, one of the most important things that bring the people together is trade. Yes. And, you know, and, 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 and we must appreciate that, you know, it is not all, all you know, trade that is big time trade, that means, you know, multi-million mm -hmm. trade. Mm -hmm. You know, we must also look to promote small, a medium scale trade. Absolutely. And a lot of the Jamaicans in the diaspora, that is their core. I mean, coming in to set up, you know, mom and pop shops, restaurants, beginning to export certain things, sorry, you know, I mean, beginning to export certain things out of Africa into the diaspora, stuff like that. So, Yes, but so we will be your first point of call because when you come in here, we will show you what to do, how to incorporate a business. Excuse me. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Yes, can you hold all calls, please? Thank you. I'm sorry. It is part of being in my office. It is Understood, and I'm prepared for yes. that. Continue. Yes. And so, you know, it, it, I mean, it is because when you come, we need to hold your hand, take you through incorporations, let you understand the dynamics of doing business in Ghana. So yes, it is my advice that Jimmy, that, that, that in my office is the first point of call you know, when you come in for you to understand how to do business in Ghana, bottom line. I appreciate that. And when you said mom and pop, you're literally speaking directly to me and uh, there are Jamaicans in the diaspora who have connected uh, to me via my YouTube channel. And um, honorary, you know, making the move to Ghana for them, you know, is to add value. Those who have reached out to me, it's not a retirement. They see themselves as entrepreneurs and would like to become part of, and certainly feel a part of um, business development here in Ghana. So this really uh, warms me, because I can then say to them, the Jamaican consulate can guide you. 
right? So on, on that, is it fair to say then, or can I suggest that once they make it to destination Ghana, that they can make that appointment and come to the consulate? Yes, but the consulate is always open, you know, it's always open for every Jamaican citizen, you know, and, and, and but that is why we are here. We are here to guide. We are here to advise, you know, and, and, and just to elaborate a bit more about the um, mom and pop shops and stuff. I mean, yeah, but what, what, what we know is that business or let's say trade between the diaspora Jamaica and Ghana is very, very low for, for some bizarre reason. In fact, um, this whole mantra of South-South cooperation and, and then this whole dream that the Marcus Garvey had that blacks did business with themselves and trade and empowered themselves. You know, it seems to be all a talk shop uh -huh. and it is not being implemented because, you know, I was in I was in Kingston sometime this year and I met with, you know, the entire business business community, you know, Jam Pro, PCOJ, um, Jamaican exporters, etc. And 99% of their trade went up north. <coughs> you know, Canada, USA, and then probably Europe, and almost nothing came to Africa. Of course, there is the argument that there are no trade links, there are no airline routes or maybe shipping lines, but the thing is, I don't think anybody has made an effort to really connect through trade. And so I don't expect us to start with the huge industries, but we must start from somewhere. That's why it is critical that we, that we begin with the little, small, medium-scale industries, mom and pop, etc. Then we start building up the momentum, understanding how to work with each other. But the time is now. The time is now we are ready for the diaspora to identify Africa, not as a spiritual partner, ah. but as a trading partner, as a business partner, because it is actually through trade and business empowerment and growth that we can also be empowered spiritually, you know, by the work happening now. It's just not to rediscover my roots, <coughs> but it is to rediscover my roots and benefit from the rediscovery. And that should be the agenda. You have touched honorary on a couple of my corns, but I won't digress because uh, that right there is... Uh, politics, but safe to say, my message has always been, it cannot only be an emotional one, the trick here. And if we are going to be using Marcus Mosiah Garvey as our reference point for each meeting, then uh, we need along with the Kumbaya to start to walk the talk. And that is why on my channel, as small as it is, you know, I literally, once I connect and start speaking to those in the Jamaican diaspora, one by one, I say, listen, the Africa journey, destination Ghana, is ripe and it's ready for you to bring your skills and your services that you have labored in the first world for for many decades. And um, as for Jamaica back home, I am on you. Trade, time is going, but I think you're the best person to continue to have dialogue where that is concerned. But certainly for me and anyone who connects with me, it's about when you come here, you know, bring your skills, bring what you have learned, yes, um, because that's what we want. You need to add value here. And um, it's not the future. It's actually now. So we are on the same page uh, with that. And I'll do my best and do my part. Uh, do you have any idea, sir, how many Jamaicans are here oh, in Ghana? I wish have, I did. Mm. So with that said, that is something that, um, you know, can I suggest or say that, you know, a database or, because I'll be encouraging 
Um, because in the event of anything, you know, we know things can happen. We have seen stuff in the global space. And one of the things I always notice is uh, when you're outside of and you're in a foreign land, uh, whether you're a citizen of the country or visiting or what, you always want to contact an embassy if there is such a one in the event of unforeseen circumstances. Yes. So with that, can I, um, is it fair to suggest then that once our Jamaicans head into Ghana, you know, once it's more than a visit to literally register at yes. least with their That's name, telephone number, and an mean. email. That's what, and when I say that, I wish I could. Mm -hmm. I was good because we have a database. Yes. Um, a registered community for us would be anything between um, three to four hundred. But I know, as a matter of fact, that we have close to two, two thousand people. Wow. Because a lot, I can easily say that um, 60 or 70 percent of the community mm -hmm. have not registered, you know, but they live in far flung places. They mm -hmm. live in a brie, I for some Cape Coast, you know, and, 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 and you know, uh, it is really a matter of choice. They know of the consulate, they are aware that there is a consulate. So yes, when we began here, we had about only 60 or 70 mm -hmm. registered. Over the course of two years, we have now close to three to 400, because people walk in, and the moment they walk in here for one service or the other, we take their details, you know. So yes, eventually the entire community would get to know that there is a representation in the country and that they need to register. But yes, we have a database of people who we have registered. Mm -hmm. And that largely comes from people who have volunteered to be registered. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't volunteer to register, absolutely, I don't absolutely. Know where you are. Absolutely. But I know for a fact that, mm -hmm. there, that there is a huge chunk of the community still out there that we are waiting for them to come and register. Well, I will encourage that now, um, because again, as I said, we know, um, you know, many of us uh, enjoy our privacy uh, to a certain degree, but again, we are on the continent, it's Ghana, and in the event of, and contact needs to be made, uh, as, uh, your name and your uh, a contact number and an email address, if you so choose on the email. I think that is uh, quite in order. Mm -hmm. uh, Honorary reversing, uh, you mentioned uh, as part of your service, notarization of documents and, and uh, passports. So is it, if we require you know, documents to be notarized, can the consulate here notif notarize it? Yes. Is it going to be free of cost or is it going to be for a fee? Well, if it is a consular related matter, mm. then it is actually free of cost, mm -hmm. you know. But if it's a private endeavor, yes. then there's a fee for it. But almost all of the times, the papers that I need to certify or notarize are consular related documents. Okay. And so that that, that it comes with the services that the we are providing. But in the event we may have a document, again, it's private, for whatever, yes. for whatever, whatever uh, reason, yes. can we say, can I say you can come to the consulate and you Absolutely. can get it notarized Absolutely. and there will be a cost. Absolutely. Call them and then they will provide Absolutely. you with the details. I think that's fantastic because you can come in, you know, get the document notarized, pay your fee and you exit. Yes. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I like that. Yeah. Uh, the next thing is your Jamaican passport needs to be renewed. You can come here and you will handle that. Yes. The time frame, sir, because I recognize that will have to go to Kingston. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has to go to Pika. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I must admit that over the past year, we've had some difficulties with the Pika. And, um, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, come from we in this part of the world. Because what we do actually is that when we get all of our passport applications, we route it through Abuja to be sent off to Pika. Yeah. And so Abuja itself is having a few problems with the Pika. 
Um, we are told that Pika has been overwhelmed over the past year for some reason or the other. So yes, um, passport renewals have to be done through the consulate. Timelines is that it's taken a fair bit of time over the past year. But we, even we have had a meeting on it. We had a meeting in Abuja last two weeks on this matter. And we have been assured that in the next months, in the coming months, all of the backlog will be sorted out and that we could be looking at renewed, um, I mean, that we will have some ex expedient, you know, or an expedient dealing with the passport applications. Now, I haven't said that, so I can give you a definite timeline. It depends on Pika, but we are hoping that Pika would resolve all of these issues and then when you come and renew, within 10 to 14 weeks or, or maximum, maybe a couple of months, you should have your passport renewed. My experience has always been positive with Pika whilst in uh, Jamaica, but then again, I, I don't know if coming off the uh, 2020 virus has caused this, but, yeah. but honorary, does it have to go through Nigeria? Can't you yes, just yes. have it from here to there? From well, here? But if you do the online, you can do the online, but yeah, but those that do it through us, yes. we need, because that is the protocol oh. that it has to go through Abuja. Yeah. Okay, but yes, they can come here through yes, here yes, yes, yes. with their passports Absolutely. to get rid because that is going to be me, you know, yes. even though and my yeah, passport have copy years on it. Yes, for, yes. But for taking on your passport application. Yes, okay. I'll put it to even probably say three months yes. tops. Yes. I think that's fair. Uh, next question, uh, the path to citizenship for the Jamaican. Obviously, you have you know, obtained your residency and you have renewed your residency. Is the path to citizenship honorary, will it be a smooth one for the Jamaican who has been residing here for anywhere between two to three years? Can, well, can we obtain I, that? But I think it's a bit more now. I think it should be more than two to three years. But what is happening that um, there, is a, there is a law being passed. I'm hoping that the law will be passed by the end of this year. It is called the Homeland Return Act. Now, it's an act that you know targets black people in the diaspora. Black people, all right? Because every black man is an African, more or less. Absolutely. And so now, I guess that the that the import of that act is to is to regularize every black person who lives in the diaspora and wants to return home regularize their paperwork here and so when that act is passed you will see that the path to to a citizenship right is going to be is going to be codified there and it is going to be easier and more simpler so i would say that for now of course you have to but i think you have to stay in Ghana for in excess of um, five years. No, 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 oh, honorary, please, please, yes. please, yes. please. Three. It's three years? <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I, I, please, make it three. Suggest, no. please. Well, I, well I, you see, the thing, but that is the truth. That is the absolute truth because, you know, three years, uh, over the past period again, what we do is that when Jamaicans in the diaspora want citizenship, right, they can apply for a special dispensation through the Office of the Diaspora Affairs at the presidency. Yes. Yes. And so, yes, it could be done within that period if you applied through, through that them. Yes. yes. And then they would vet your your application and what you're doing here, etc., and make recommendations to, to the president. Last month or so, I think 120 odd Jamaicans were given citizenship, and it was through the Office of the Diaspora Affairs. But having said that, all of that is going to be regularized when the Act is passed by the end of the year, which I guess will not even determine the number of years that you're here, as long Correct. as you are. Uh, you, but you are of African descent. Yeah. You know, you could come back home. And you you could be given citizenship of Ghana. Wonderful, 
wonderful honorary. Lastly, what would you say to our Jamaicans in the diaspora about Ghana in this present moment and your encouragement? After all, your honorary council here uh, at the consulate. Please share. Well, to all, my, to all of my brothers and sisters in the diaspora, you know, there's never a better time to welcome them than now. Because, you know, Africa is a new frontier, right? It is. And, yes. you know, and, 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 and it is, it is a, it's a good time to come on. It's a good time to bring your skills, to share with your people. I mean, of course, the whole world is currently going through a lot of economic turmoil. Ghana has not been left out of it. And that is even... That is why it is even more critical that this is the time that you come and help rebuild the African continent. Because, you know, each, if each and every one of us black people came back home, yes. can you imagine how powerful that yes. is continent would, yes. that would be? Yes. And of course, you are amongst your kith and kin. Yes. The moment you step on the, yes. on the soil of Ghana, you will know that you are home. Yes. But your spirit would know that it has come back. Yes. It's a good country to live in. The vibe is good. Yes. The food is just like, just like back home, you know, Jamaica. The music, the people, everything. You will feel at home. Come on, people. This is the time. Honorary Council, thank you so much. My pleasure. This will be one of my most memorable one-on-one. -on -one. You have always been accommodating to me. I opened uh, by introducing the audience to you as a guest, an esteemed guest. It is my hope that you will become a staple of the Diana's channel. And with that, I'm going to leave you. Thank you. And Thank wish you, you well. You. Guys, please share, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. May I say, one love. One love. God bless. Nice. Yes. <laughs>